Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. Well, today I would like to show you a very nice and funny application of a field in Galois theory in a branch that you could call or a sub branch of um, algebraic number theory. So there will be a relation, a very interesting and surprising in my opinion, relation between Galois groups of uh, polynomials, so roots of polynomials and well, certain questions in uh, algebraic number theory, in particular, whether you can express a number in terms of roots of unities. Uh, we'll see. And all of this dates, well, is usually called the Kronecker Weber theorem. Well, I think it goes back to a conjecture of Kronecker and the theorem of Weber, but it's, it's, it's certainly one of the classical theorems in uh, algebraic number theory. By now, it should be around 140 years old, so by now I mean 2021. Um, and the corresponding extension of it, uh, we'll have a look at that later, is again 2021, still open. Um, and it's called, usually called uh, Kronecker's Jugendtraum, whatever. Anyway, it's a funny, really, really funny connection between Galois groups and uh, roots of unities. So let's get started and let's recall what roots of unities actually are. And it's, it's, it's kind of the easiest equation you can write down. There are solutions to the easiest equations you can write down. So um, x to the k, so this should be a k, minus 1 equals 0. So those guys are called the roots of unity. Um, in this case, they are all cased roots of unity. And they are all of this form. There are some x or e. Let me just write x, then it's easier to read. And it's some j times 2 pi i over k. So the k here is the order and the j is basically the running index. I will do this in a second for those um, pictures, um, but that's how they look like. And then there are the primitive ones. Those are the ones where j and k are co-prime. So GCD is one. In particular, um, in all of my examples, I always, will always take j equals one. It's kind of the naive generator of um, those, well, groups of roots of unities. And what are these? Well, uh, they are solutions to those polynomial equations, or they are the uh, basic, basically the vertices in coordinates. So uh, in coordinates here, I mean everything in the background here is my complex field, uh, which you can identify with R squared, of course. So in, in all of those pictures, that's the background. And what you see is this red circle is a unit circle. So it's of radius one particular the point in the middle, which is not illustrated, well, whatever, would make the picture too clustered, uh, too cumbersome, um, would be the uh, zero. And this point here, which is always there, is one. Because, well, why should one be always there? Because one is, of course, always the solution to x to the k minus one. So one is always here in all of those pictures. And the other points you see here are the other solutions. So here, for example, the fifth root of unity, they arrange themselves uh, along a pentagon, a pentagon which is anchored in the following way. You draw the unit circle, as I said, so the red one, and you anchor your polygon, uh, your pentagon at one, and then you try to fill it in uh, in a regular way. And whatever you find, those are the fifth roots of unities. And um, yeah, so, and then indexing set here is as follows. So a full turn, that's two pi i, right? So that's two pi i. So that's why you always have this two pi i here and x kind of measures the angle anyway. So, um, and if you want to divide the full turn into k pieces, you take two pi i over k, that's what you do here. And the j is then the position uh, along the reading, uh, well, uh, uh, reading in, in this direction. So usually in mathematics, you very often read in a uh, counterclockwise direction. So you're reading in counterclockwise direction, starting here secretly with j equals zero, uh, which uh, x plus zero is of course one. So this is j equals one. This, this is the one I usually choose. So the first one that you see if you start at one, so you go along to your, uh, your whatever, in this case, the square, you go along the uh, polygon, and the first one you see is uh, j equals one, then you have j equals two, and you have j equals three, and so on. And the primitive ones are kind of the generators of uh, this um, description. For example, 
um, for the, well, let's say this one here, that's to the eight. Into the eight, you clearly see, you can also connect them like this. So in the, the eight roots of unities, you also have, remember that I want to anchor it here. You also have the square sitting. So um, whatever are the edges of the square or the vertices of the square, they should, shouldn't be primitive eight roots of unities because they already have appeared before. That's basically the notion of those primitive ones. They already had to have appeared here. And in this picture, you can draw a line from left to right. So those two are also not primitive. They have appeared before. And in this picture, this one has appeared before, right? So uh, one is a primitive once root of unity, if you want. Minus one is a primitive second root of unity. Uh, this guy up here is I, and its its friend down here is minus I. So I would be a primitive fourth root of unity, and whatever this guy is, it would be a primitive eighth root of unity. Anyway, all you need to remember is that they align themselves very nicely uh, along the circle. That's how they are constructed, and they're all of the form x two pi i over k times times a certain scalar. Okay, and they actually have very very easy Galois groups, and that's also not so hard to see. So uh, the standard notation for those x, so the, the one I chose here. So here's again one, two pictures of a regular tengon. Okay, here's again one, and I always choose this one, and this I, I call it theta. 10 in this case, so theta k. Um, so in this case, theta, sen, theta 10 in, in general, theta k. And this is always x e, uh, 2 pi i over k. And then, of course, the GCD condition is trivially satisfied. So this is always a generator. And um, the corresponding Galois extension uh, it has this funny property that it is a very nice abelian group, namely the invertible elements. Think of multiplication here, not addition, the vertical elements in Z mod N. And these are all A, which satisfies this property. So A, uh, all A is such as the GCD of A and K is one. And the map from the Galois group uh, or from Z mod NZ to the Galois group is, it sends A to the map that's, that takes the eighth power of my uh, generator like, like this one. And if you know that, or if you know the picture, then you also know why you don't want to have something um, something that has, so this has GCD of three and 10 is of course, uh, they, are, they don't have anything in common. So this is one. And I will explain in a second why this is good. GCD of 10 and two is of course bad. This is two and this is not one. And what, what, what you do is you would, for example, you would like to square this generator, but if you square it, that's uh, on this description, you just jump over one point. So you go from here to here, you square it again, you go from here to so you take the next one, do the next one, you do the next one, and you will see that you won't hit everything. You're kind of running in a smaller polygon, and that's not what you want. You want to have something such that you can hit everything. So here, if you move three steps, so one, two, three, you move three steps and so on. You will run down, run uh, along this. You will, you will basically um, have a nice graph such that you can visit every vertex, and that's what you want. That's really what you need to have an automorphism. So, in order to describe the Galois group and on the other side. Um, so, this is really not hard, and you can sit down yourself and convince yourself that I'm not just talking completely nonsense. Usually, I'm talking a lot of nonsense, but maybe it's not completely nonsense. Um, anyway, so this is kind of a fun observation you do when you study Galois theory for the first time and someone tells you that roots of unities are interesting. And of course they are because they are the solutions to the easiest polynomial equations that are not completely boring and trivial. So you would observe this one here. So R uh, O U, which is just a shorthand for root of unity implies a billion. That's what I would like to call it. And the only statement here is that the Galois group of roots of unities is a billion. It's an abelian group. Um, and that happens actually pretty rarely. So most Galois groups are not abelian, okay? They're mostly not abelian. They're anything else than abelian. It seems like roots of unities are very special, uh, which you could, well, guess because they have some pretty obvious and, well, maybe not obvious, but certainly pretty nice patterns. And the Kronika-Weber theorem is now the surprising 
uh, result that the converse is actually true. He is still stated in uh, with question marks. So um, a Billing Galois group, does it apply being root of unity? I will explain what I mean by being in a second, but it's in quotation marks. They're not really root of unities on the nose, but they are linear combinations of roots of unities. A linear combination in the sense of um, taking, well, my ground field is Q. Okay, so that's my ground field. And the kind of the main observation you do here, you have something like this, uh, x squared minus five. And of course you have plus minus five as roots. And the Galois group of this thing is just C mod two. So swapping the sign here in front of plus minus five. So far so good, nothing really complicated. And then someone tells you that actually square root of five can express in terms of roots of unities. I've written it down. And it's not so obvious that you can do this. Uh, here's a picture how this is supposed to look like. So you take the, the sum of those two and you subtract those two. And this gives you a square root of five, which I think is far from obvious. So this formula, it looks a little bit crazy here, right? So just checking what the Galois group was in this case is much easier. You need to know more, I admit that. You, have, you need to know Galois theory. You need to have a machinery at hand. But as soon as you have some machinery, doing this check wasn't all that bad. Writing down and even coming up with this expression of square root of five, even guessing that there is an expression of square root of five, which looks like that. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have done that. I, I couldn't have done that. Um, and of course, you can go on. So this one here has Galois group being the Klein four group. Again, that's of course abelian. And you have some crazy expression uh, of square root of minus seven in terms of roots of unities, which I have no idea why I should even believe that this is true. And um, kind of Kronecker's Jugendtraum in some sense, uh, so his dream was that this is actually true and Weber proved it and that's the whole point. So the first application here of Galois theory is this very surprising statement of uh, Kronecker Weber that um, well, formally speaking, it's the following, the union of all of those field extensions containing the roots of unities is the maximal abelian field extension of Q. So again, my ground field here is, is Q and I want to extend Q. Okay, so it's a maximal abelian one or equivalently every finite Galois extension of Q uh, with abelian Galois group is contained in some theta K. And this is, this is exactly the statement, right? So um, as soon as you are contained in some theta K, you have, you know that you are some linear combination of roots of unities, which is exactly what I showed. Uh, what I what I showed here on, on this slide in two very specific examples. Of course, you shouldn't look too closely at those formulas. There might even be typos, but I, I think I stole them from Wikipedia linked in the description. So hopefully there are not, not, not too many typos. But uh, the point is, this is really not obvious. And it's not obvious why it should work. And this theorem tells you, an effective if and only if criteria when you should expect this to work. For example, every, every uh, element of this form plus minus n is actually some, some linear combination of some roots of unities, which I mean, come on, that's not really obvious. Uh, only for, for something simple like square root of five, this is far from being obvious. Um, if you want to have a nice homework, now try square root of two. Uh, good luck. Um, and. I mean, this statement is general, more general, right? A everything was an abelian uh, Galois group, if you can write it. And it's still open. Um, so here's Kronecker's original letter to Dedekind where he formulates his Jugendtraum. Um, the still open question, um, Kronecker's Jugendtraum or Hilbert's 12th problem. There's a partial solutions, of course, but as far as I know, it's still open uh, in 2021. Is, well, replace your ground field by something different and try to play the same game. Why not? It, it's still kind of the same idea. You express things in terms of unities, you look at the billion extensions and you, you check what is expressible as a root of unity or not. And that's not completely obvious. Or it's, it's, it, it's hard, hard in the sense that it's still not known after whatever, 140 years. But uh, let me repeat the statement, the, the Konica Weber theorem, not the one that is still open. The Konica Weber theorem says abelian extensions are basically the same as root of unities, which is very surprising. And if you care about expressions like those, and some people really do like those expressions, then um, 
go ahead, calculate Galois groups, which is which is pretty cool. And if you say now, wait, calculating Galois groups, no, 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 we can't do that. It's actually not so bad. So let's have a look at a, an example. So I will run for you MACMAR in a second. Um, it's freely available. How you do this is uh, linked in the description or how you do this in this example. So it's um, so if you watch my videos usually, then you would know that I like to use Mathematica. Um, but sometimes other programs are better because, uh, well, they just have built-in functions that work pretty well. And Magmar is really good in doing anything related to some kind of algebra that can compute Galois groups very fast in, in a very nice way, as you will see in a second. Um, but so you can really use this Kronecker Weber theorem in a twofold way. You can uh, start with your favorite number, calculate its Galois group, check whether it's a billion. If it's a billion, then you're good to go to find to try to find some one of those crazy formulas. If it's not a billion, better give up. It's really then a no-go theorem. You can't do this. So here's an example which I'm going to run uh, in Magma in a second. So this polynomial, so the roots of this polynomial are sine swaps of, of this element. So square root of two plus square root of two. And um, well, it's not completely obvious, but Magma checks for me. Uh, so it's an algorithm, right? If, if a computer program can do that, then it's an algorithm, which is not too bad. Um, it checks for me that this is Z mod four. So um, this guy actually is a root of unity in the sense that it's a linear combination. I haven't bothered to work out what the linear combination is. Might be very hard, might be very easy. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, it, some crazy formula like that. But by just feeding it into uh, a computer algebra, I could have done this calculation by hand, but I'm just super lazy. I feed it into a machine. The machine tells me, oh, this is a billion. So I know that this has to hold. OK, so my polynomial here was x to the 4 minus 4 x squared plus 2. And I just mildly vary the coefficient. I only make it uh, x to the 4 minus 5 instead of minus 4. And then you can check, I don't even want to write down the splitting field anymore, it doesn't matter, that this guy is actually the Hedro group of order eight. And you can check, I mean, try it yourself, I will run it in a second for the first one, and check that I actually haven't screwed up here and haven't had any uh, um, uh, typos here in, in those coefficients of the polynomial, that this is actually the Hedro group of order eight, this is non-abelian, so uh, the solutions of this uh, polynomial equation, which are this form, are then not roots. So you can't express them in, as linear combinations of roots of unity, which again is completely not obvious. I mean, sure, it looks a little bit stranger than this one, but it, it's still a root in a root. So why not? If one root in, in a root can be expressed, why should the, the other root in the root shouldn't be expressible? But actually it's not. And you can check that by the chronic favor theorem, which is, which is pretty strong. So this is actually, it's, it's a really strong theorem. The proof itself, I haven't to told you about the proof. The proof itself usually goes beyond um, what algebraic, uh, so, sorry, what um, a cross in algebra or Galois theory can cover because it uses some, some ideas from, from other parts, but it's, it's not super, super complicated. Um, the result is fantastic. You only need to know magma, basically, and magma calculates for you the Galois group, and then you're good to go. So let's run Magma. So here's Magma, and you can use it online with a link that you can either read here or which is uh, copy, uh, linked down in the description. And also the code I'm using, I linked it down in the description. So you can feed it in. Basically what it is, you set up a polynomial ring, you feed in your favorite polynomial, you uh, ask but, uh, Magma to compute the Galois group and you print it. So you, you, you ask Magma to show it to you. So you just click submit. It takes uh, not very long because it's a very easy one, but anyway, and it shows you the result. It shows you that it's a, a group of order four and it shows you two generators of this group of order four. Okay, so it's a group of order four. So what do we do with this information? Well, we look in the table of, of the list of finite groups, also linked in the description. We see that there are only two groups of order four either Z mod four or the Klein four group Z mod two cross Z mod two. And we only need to check which one it is. Actually, we would be already done because both of them are abelian, but in general, you would need to check which one it is. And you see here that, that Magma tells you that there's a four cycle 
Uh, so that's of order four, so it has to be Z mod four, as I claim. And now we can, for example, vary here uh, the coefficient. You can make it a three if you want, not a five, as in my example. Ask Magma again, and it tells you, oh, it's actually a group of order two, so it's Z mod two. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting that one to happen. So let me let me make it uh, 37 and see what happens. And now it's a group of order eight generated by those two elements. And this looks pr pretty much to me like this one is also a dihedral group. So whatever the roots of that polynomial are, it's x to the four minus 37 times x squared plus two. And you can't express them in terms of roots of unities. Yeah, so we are back to my slides. And this was actually the last one. So let me summarize. Most importantly, there's an cal calculating Galois groups isn't all that bad. There's an algorithm that does it. And the one I like to use is, is Magma linked in the description. It's not perfect. It doesn't tell you the group in the way you want it to know. It tells you the group as a, uh, as a subgroup basically of, of, of uh, the symmetric group. So it gives you permutations that generate the group. But well, it's still not bad. It's an algorithm to calculate those Galois groups. And the application then I, I explained today is the um, Kronecker-Weber theorem, which tells you now that whenever this result, which is, I say it again, just an algorithm, you feed it in the machine, the machine just says yes or no, that's basically what it is. Um, that result, you can then check whether certain roots of polynomials are expressible in some crazy formula involving, um, uh, well, roots of unities. And those formulas are usually very hard to find, or at, at least it's not completely obvious how to find them. So I find this result pretty strong, actually. Um, right? It's, it's a yes or no question. You ask a computer, and you, you usually know the answer for any reasonable polynomial. It will tell you the answer within um, two seconds. So before I quit this video, let me also say that you, if you play around with magma, just vary a little bit the coefficients of your polynomials, in almost all cases, you won't get an abelian group. Just check that. As, as soon as you start with a high enough degree, you will basically never get an abelian group. Anyway, um, which kind of fits to the Kronecker Weber theorem because I think I would expect personally that most numbers are not expressible in some crazy linear combination of roots of unities. Anyway, I'm already starting waffling. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.